Good evening. My name is Judson Jones, Artistic Director. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I want to thank the wonderful actors you're about to see. I also want to thank Daniel McIver for allowing us to read his play. I want to thank Alani's Time to Square Pub, which is the place that has sponsored the Neighborhood Reading Series for the past 10 years, the place where we normally would be doing this. I cannot wait for us to be back there uh, again together. Uh, hello, Maureen and Hugh and Norm and Angela uh, and all of the fine folks there. Um, I, I'm not gonna make any kind of pitch about donating uh, to theaters. Here's what I will say. If you support a nonprofit, nonprofits need your help. So please consider giving to whatever nonprofit you support. But for now, enjoy. This is a play by Daniel McIver. Bear Stage Black. This is an original score. The score has been created especially for this piece. And not only is it an original score, in the sense that it has been created for this piece specifically, but also in the sense that it is undeniably original. Lights up. Female actor is on stage. She gazes dreamily off. Older female actor enters. Ooh, there's a cold wind blowing in off the East Bay. I'll go fetch your shawl, Auntie. No, no, girl. Sit, sit. Lettuce is coming up real nice out back. 615 should be passing through real soon. Oh, sissy. You're always waiting for that train. You spend your whole life waiting, sitting like some little bird, sitting like some little glass bird on a shelf waiting for that train. Waiting. Oh, auntie. Waiting. For the train. <laughs> There it is! Oh, Auntie, it's stopping. Now who'd be foolish enough to get off here? A stranger. A stranger? Male actor and female actor turn to face one another. They slowly walk backwards and away from one another off stage. You confused <laughs> by the moody lighting and the fact that I'm sitting in my kitchen? Are you nervous because you thought that you were going to see a comedy? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> it's experimental! <laughs> relax, relax. You know me. <laughs> I'm the older but still attractive female actor. Wise and gruff and charming. Rough around the edges but soft on the inside. I'm a mother image for the playwright. But but a more perfect mother, not like his own, who never really understood his delicate artistic sensibilities. And now I deliver my first monologue. It is a story about three heads of lettuce, which were separated and how they ended up. Three lonely heads of lettuce, one in a kitchen and one in a market and one in the back of a produce truck a story which asks the question, will they ever reunite? You worry again that you might be watching children's theater. <laughs> well, it, it should be. You look at your watch and you shift in your seat and I'm out of here. I enter with conviction. I pick up the position stage right. I am sick with embarrassment. Not only did I trip on my first big cross, but now I'm not in my light. <laughs> I find my light. <laughs> <laughs> I look out at the audience, but just over your heads so as not to destroy your suspended disbelief. <laughs> and I wonder what to do with my hands. <laughs> I think about winning a Helen Hayes Award. <laughs> <laughs> I begin a speech about lettuce. 
Every time I say the word lettuce, <laughs> I say it with great emphasis because the writer told me to. <laughs> My story is about one lonely lettuce in a kitchen. And then I talk about my recently deceased brother. Then I hint at this mysterious mission type thing that I'm on. I don't understand this speech, but you know, I managed to fake it. <laughs> <laughs> then I, I move my arms in a very strange way because the director has a dance background. <laughs> and then once again, I mention lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> then silence. I exit. Tentatively, I enter, gracefully moving my arms in a strange way because the director has a dance background. <laughs> Immediately and professionally, I scan the audience quickly out of the corner of my eye and I wonder if my mother is here. <laughs> I think about art and I begin my monologue. <laughs> It is a story about lettuce, fun, <laughs> lonely lettuce in a market, a monologue, which would be a total embarrassment if it weren't for the brilliant emotional motivations given to me by my director, my mentor. I continue once again mentioning lettuce and then leap to noting my relationship to the older female actor who is currently smoking in the non-smoking green room. <laughs> now, I take up a strong position center and I wait for the entrance of my leading man, the empty headed monster. I enter with conviction. <laughs> I think about Timothy Chalamet <laughs> and I look away and I wait for her to look at me. I'm sure he must be thinking about Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> <laughs> I wait for her to look at me. I wait for as long as possible. And I, I look at her. I think, I wish they cast someone better looking. I think, <laughs> he thinks I can't act. I think he can't act. Focus. Focus. I take my time. I let the audience drink me in. I feel pretty. I do a quick little spin and with a tentative interest, look at him with a question in my eyes. I look at her. She's got that weird look on her face again. I snap myself out of it by thinking about stardom. And I speak my lines with some anger and conviction. I respond with annoyance at his response to my questioning look. Well, I respond with confusion to her strange reaction to my response to her weird look after my great conviction. <laughs> I react shrilly to his confused response to my annoyance with his aggression toward my quick little spin and my tentative questioning look. I forget what I'm supposed to do next. <laughs> he probably forgets what he's supposed to do next. So I pause. I remember. <laughs> I cross the stage. Like a caged animal. I take up a position ever so. Slightly away from, yet ever so. Slightly toward pain, hope, and fear dance across my face in a delirious symphony. I pause not supposed to take this pause. The director told him a hundred times this pause is not needed. In the pause, I act really hard. <laughs> you're dragging the play down, you're milking the moment, you're killing the momentum, you're pissing me off. With excellent acting, now mustard, I upstage her and I say my line. <laughs> I fix my great hair, I upstage him back and I refuse to say my line. <laughs> She's blanked. I wait. I make him sweat. I sweat? <laughs> I say my line. I'll never take that pause again. <laughs> I ask him a rhetorical question. I ask her a rhetorical question. I tell him it was a rhetorical question. <laughs> 
What's a rhetorical question? <laughs> <laughs> Why, it's a question that's got no answer, of course. Didn't you learn that in school? Huh. I learned that questions have answers. <laughs> Some don't. What kind of questions don't have answers? The question from our heart. If only I had a heart. Everybody's got a heart. Do they? <laughs> What's your name? I'm Joey. I'm Sissy. Sissy. <laughs> I bet you got a heart, though. Don't you, Sissy? Don't touch me. Don't you ever touch me. You can't touch me. I'm made of glass, and you're a stranger here. Auntie, Auntie, Auntie. For the love of God and all the saints in heaven, what is it, girl? Auntie, there's a stranger among us. Where? Who is he? <laughs> Who are you? What are you doing to my niece? Blackout. <laughs> Blackout. But then again, what is <laughs> an original composition? What is original if the art is an extension of the artist? And if each person is an original being, then doesn't it just follow that even the most banal, indulgent, and derivative work? Lights up. Older female actor stands center holding a bowl of soup. Silence. A long silence. <laughs> A very long silence. <laughs> As I stand here holding a bowl of soup for no good reason other than for you to imagine what a good-hearted, folksy, and simple person I am. <laughs> I think about the other two now off stage, congratulating themselves on their overwrought performances. <laughs> and I suddenly become deeply sad about not being in a better wig. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I speak. A perilous journey over dry and dusty terrain, explaining things. And I lost my place. <laughs> and I'm finding my place. <laughs> explaining things that you already know, that the girl is my niece and the boy is a stranger. I smile. I continue the exposition, talking to whom I don't, I'm not quite sure because the director insists that I'm talking to God and the writer insists that I'm talking to myself and lost in a moment of accidental profundity, I, I struggle for focus. I enter with conviction. And here comes Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> <laughs> I think about Timothy Chalamet and wait for her to sing her first line. <laughs> I glance at her and I see that she's in one of those trances again. I try not to panic, and I get into her line of vision. I gently take him by the arm and lead him to his light. I think, <laughs> why is she dragging me around the stage? <laughs> I feed him his first line. I say my first line. <laughs> I smile. I finally get to say my first line. I say my second line. I say my second line. I say my third line. I say my third line. I say my fourth line. I say my ninth line. <laughs> I look at her funny. Focus. Focus. I say my sixth line. I say my fifth line. I say my <laughs> third line again. I say my <laughs> tenth line. I tell her my name. <laughs> I act the line. That name means nothing to me. <laughs> I speak her name. I turn away. I speak her name, but not call her name. Uh, I'm not sure what the difference between speaking and calling is, but it says it in the script. He speaks her name, not calling. And the writer says what I do is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I fix my eyes upon him with great contempt. I think she hates me. I turn away. Relieved, I tell this cute little story about a dog I used to have. 
it's not supposed to be here, but it was cut from my first monologue and the writer and director had a big fight about it. And so <laughs> I get to say it now. <laughs> I think the writer really likes me. <laughs> I look at him with curiosity and think about how much saliva he has. <laughs> <laughs> I worry that I might be spitting. <laughs> feel sorry for the people sitting in the front row. <laughs> I finish off about the dog and I mention my brother. And then I congratulate myself on my good acting. <laughs> I see a casting director sitting in the third row. I wish they kept in that part where I take off my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I lead him through his blocking and wonder what the writer sees in him. I think, why is she dragging me around the stage again? <laughs> I wait for his line, which mentions his brother's name. I wait for her line. He thinks it's my line. <laughs> it's her line, isn't it? <laughs> I say a line that's not even in the script. That line's not in the script. <laughs> even though it makes no emotional sense to my character whatsoever, I outright ask him what his brother's name is. <laughs> oh, right. I mentioned my brother's name. Why? That name means nothing to me. <laughs> well, he's dead. <gasps> what is it? Nothing. Just death always makes me gasp. <laughs> is that all? Of course. Look at me. Look at me! <laughs> Don't I remind you of someone? No. You stay away from me. And you stay away from my niece. That girl is fragile. You hurt her and I'll break you. You mark my words. I can't believe they couldn't find her a better wig. I come downstage and say something uh, poetic. I give him a bowl of soup. <laughs> I <laughs> take the bowl of soup. And I'm out of here. <laughs> She wasn't supposed to give me the bowl of soup. Tentatively, I enter. Everything I do is tentative because I understand my character to be tentative. And so everything I say or do is said and done in a tentative way. Tentative, yet tense. A tense tentativeness. But can tension be tentative? Can tentativeness be tense. Have I based my character on an emotional impossibility? <laughs> Am I a fraud? Is that why my mother never comes to see my play? <laughs> why is she holding a bowl of soup? <laughs> I offer her the bowl of soup. <laughs> and begin my monologue. I tell a story about my childhood and talk in poetic imagery about summer and sea air. I talk about a boy I remember. A boy in short pants and freckles. Lose my place. I think, why does the score have to come in here? <laughs> I become self-conscious. Maybe if the writer spent more time working on the script rather than chasing down interviews, we wouldn't need to hide the words by playing something over them. I feel like I'm yelling. <laughs> In terms of originality, we have to ask the question, how can anything be original beyond the first thought, the first idea? It is as if the first impulse to art was original art, and then every impulse after this is an interpretation, a facsimile, if you will, making none but the original, original, original. I've got to get a copy of that score. <laughs> I think about my first acting teacher, how she told me I barked on my lines and how I hated her. I wonder if it's unhealthy to build an entire career on spite. I lose my place. I don't feel happy. I'm supposed to be happy in this moment. I try to think about something happy. I remember last night at the director's apartment, his beautiful eyes, his manly hands, that look in his eyes. I know that he loves me and we will be together forever. <laughs> Silently, I dedicate my performance to him. I continue on now about my childhood, summer, and sea air. 
Then I tentatively mention lettuce. I compliment myself internally for a beautiful performance and I wait for him to say his line. I think she must be sleeping with the director. Mm -hmm. I shoot him a look. Lettuce? What was that about, lettuce? Nothing, just, I've got something against lettuce. Smash! <laughs> Funny. So do I. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> Sorry that I got so upset before. It's just that I'm fragile. I got a past. Everybody's got a past, sissy. Yes. Yeah, they do. Gee, I feel like you know me. <laughs> do you? Yeah, I do. They move in slowly to kiss. Blackout. They are closer to kissing. Blackout. They are almost kissing. Blackout. <laughs> Blackout. But is originality even enough? What about concept? What about content? And how do I know that someone in Berlin or Japan hasn't created an original score exactly like this original score, making neither original? I take my time entering because I feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> I begin a monologue you can tell was stuck in after previews because no one in the audience could understand what the hell was going on. <laughs> Relentless exposition peppered with lame humor, and since I'm alone on stage again and no one's really listening anyway, I leave out a paragraph of particular purpleness. Later, I'll say I forgot it and apologize, and I will be forgiven because they expect that from the older female actor and her fading memory. <laughs> now, out of nowhere, I sing a few lines from an old Scottish ditty. <laughs> to try and distract from the writing so shitty <laughs> and the non-existent connection to the next shoddy section <laughs> then i stop suddenly i hear them coming i react and leave the stage in a manner that indicates that i'll be somewhere watching but i won't <laughs> male actor and female actor enter holding hands his hand is so clammy. I begin tentatively at first my favorite monologue. It's a lovely monologue full of images and metaphors drawn from modern psychology and nature creating a philosophy of functional spirituality. And then I look at him with a look that lets him know that he is everything to me. My life, my love, my future. I try not to gag or sound ironic. I get an impulse. Oh no, he's got an impulse. <laughs> I slowly begin to take off my shirt. <laughs> I try to pretend that he is not taking off his shirt. First I pull it up from my pants. Then I... Undo each button from the bottom, filling my eyes with hazy possibilities. Bet that casting director is gonna hire me now. <laughs> I pray for a blackout. <laughs> oh, I suck in my gut and I think about Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> I'm sure he's thinking about Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> I realize that I probably should not be thinking about a guy right now. I wonder if he's gay. I wonder if I'm gay. Focus. Focus. I stare at her with passion. I cannot meet his eyes. I stare. I can't. I stare. I can't. I stare. I can't. I stare. I can't. We wait. We wait. We wait. Wait. <gasps> <gasps> we gasp. I stand center as if I have something important to say. <laughs> I look at her with defiance mixed with shame. 
I look at her and wonder why they couldn't find her a better wig. <laughs> I look at him. I look at her. I wonder, did I leave my cigarette burning? <laughs> Blackout. Blackout. Or perhaps there is a wave of thought which is shared by all creators, tuning in and out of one another's ideas. Does this account for the instances of innocent plagiarism such as occurred on that classic episode of The Partridge Family when Danny's... Fascinatingly, the scene begins in the middle of an argument. <laughs> I say something I don't understand. <laughs> I say something he doesn't understand. I say something that makes sense of what they said and I managed to make the line funny, even though it isn't. <laughs> A bit. Of mammoth. Esk. Dia. Log. Twift. And frack. Third. And. Highly. Enter. Cain. Ing. Or, or so. Thinks. The writer. <laughs> and now. A sentence brimming with brutal imagery stolen from early Tennessee Williams. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, wish that someone would do... The glass menagerie again. <laughs> That's the perfect part for me. <laughs> I implore her. I beseech her. I ignore him. I challenge her. I evade her. I corner her. I beseech her. I shun him. I accuse her. I beseech her. I implore her. <laughs> Toward her already. I challenge her. She did that. <laughs> I beg her. I beg her. <laughs> I take all the focus now. You drink me in. I, at first, begin to try not to cry. Holding it back, holding it back, holding it back. I don't want to cry, I don't want to cry. Holding back, holding back. Tears just rush forward and words roll out, which explain the argument we were just having, and then brings attention around to his brother. <laughs> With startling conviction, even to myself, I threaten to say what I know. Feigned courage, I dare him. A stunned silence from me. <laughs> I speak as if entranced, because that's what the script says I do. <laughs> I talk about my dead brother and his deathbed message about a woman named Auntie. Now, I'm supposed to cry about my brother. Of course, I <laughs> never had a brother. And so I use the Uta Hagen substitution message. I heard, you know, those two actors talking about last week. <laughs> I'm trying to substitute my dead cousin, but I never liked my cousin. And I'd rather substitute Mr. Whiskers, my cat who died. But it seems kind of dumb to substitute a cat for a person. But, you know, I guess that's just kind of the point of it, you know. It's, it's, you know, it's not a cat, you know, it's an armadillo or, you know, whatever. It's just that, you know, it's somebody that you wish you never went away. And then, <laughs> oh. <laughs> you Mr. Whiskers. <laughs> I think he must be sleeping with the writer. <laughs> All right. I begin an endless and pointless story about my girlhood, full of that salty, wheezing humor you've grown so accustomed to. <laughs> then more drivel about my <clears throat> gritty adolescence, and then a hint about a secret. And finally, a chance to do a little acting. <laughs> I won't cry. I won't cry. I won't cry. My God. She's good. <laughs> and then more sap until from out of nowhere and using every trick I have been ashamed to see another actor use, I skillfully bring it around to lettuce. I look at him. I look at her. I look at them. 
What's all this talk about lettuce, anyway? Auntie has a fondness for lettuce. I always have, girl. You know that. <laughs> well, I have this. A lettuce tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you know? <laughs> that lettuce tattoo. Just like... <laughs> oh my god! You got one too! And so did my brother! What does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean, Auntie? What does it mean? Male actor and female actor move toward and away from one another in dance-like movements. This continues throughout the older female actor's speech. We move together. We move apart. We move together. We move apart. We move together. We move apart. And now, I step forward to wrap things up. <laughs> but God knows why, since no effort was made to create a plausible plot. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, I explain that as a girl, I had triplets, those two, and the dead brother. I marked all three with a lettuce tattoo and gave the boys to a foster home and only the recently dead one knew about it. And so on and so on and more exposition. But then comes the last line of the monologue. And although it is somewhat corny, I like to say it because it makes me feel like I'm on stage and reminds me why I do this job. And also the title of the play is The Line and that seems to make me the star. <laughs> this line. Hmm. So no more shadows, no more lies, no stranger among us. Oh, Joey. Oh, sissy. Oh, mama. Oh, mama. They embrace her. <laughs> Blackout. Blackout. Which brings us to who owns the idea? Yes, who indeed. Ultimately, and I suppose this is a symptom of the business society, but ultimately, it is the person who pays for the idea who owns the idea. Lights up. The three actors are on stage in a line facing out, their hands behind their backs. Here we stand. Each of us alone. A group. I fix my hair. We do our best to muster meaning in this pause. I make a statement which seems somewhat out of character, thus indicating a change. So do I. So do I. And then... From behind our backs... Each of us... Produce... A lettuce. A lettuce. <laughs> a lettuce. <laughs> and in this strange, almost surreal gesture, there is some kind of clarity. And inexplicably, for a moment, each one of us, even me, each one of us, each one of us, seems to understand something. 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 And as the lights fade, I think about Uta Hagen. I think about Timothy Chalamet. I think about Jack Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> we are actors. And this, this, this. This is a play. And that is the end of this original score. <laughs> okay, that should be enough. If you need more, just start it over from the beginning. Now, can we talk about money? Seriously, though. Blackout.
Yeah. Thank you all.